Hey there, I'm Jenna with Databox, and welcome to another episode of Data Snacks. Today, we're going to be creating a dashboard that'll show us exactly which email campaigns are driving the most traffic to your website. So many of us focus time and energy on building our email lists. The blog posts we write, the videos and podcasts that we record, the lead magnets and the CTAs we create, a big focus on all of these top of funnel activities is the end goal of growing our respective lists. Because we're putting so much investment in growing a healthy list of subscribers, we need to spend as much time making sure our email campaigns follow through. So today I'm going to show you an easy way to track, analyze, and report on that. From a tactical standpoint, here's what we're going to cover. How to calculate and track website sessions by email marketing source, seven critical email metrics you should be tracking the performance of, and how to create a comprehensive email overview dashboard that gives you all of this information at a glance. I'm going to meet you inside my computer here and let's get started. All right, I am inside the Databox app. The first thing I'm gonna do is navigate to the Databox designer. Adding metrics, super easy. Start by choosing the data source from the metrics library here on the left, then drag and drop some of the available pre-built metrics. And I wanna use HubSpot marketing as my data source. If you use a different email marketing platform, don't worry, you can still follow along. In this case, I want a comprehensive overview of how my emails are performing. So this will include tracking of sent, delivered, open, and clicked emails. We're also gonna look at sessions by email marketing source, emails open rate, emails click rate, and that will be by percentage, and emails click rate by email. And don't worry if you didn't catch any of that, I'm gonna go through all of those separately. So here's a glimpse of the dashboard we're gonna be creating. With Databox, you can choose how you want to visualize your metrics. And I've selected some options here that best illustrate the meaning behind the data I've selected. So let's start with emails overview. For this, I need to create a table. From this overview, I can learn the following four things. One, I have a clear visual representation of how many emails I've sent. Two, I can see from the number sent how many were actually delivered. In other words, how many actually landed in someone's inbox. Three, from how many delivered, I can see how many were opened. And finally, four, from how many were open, I can see the number that resulted in clicks. What we want is for the number of emails sent to be as close as possible to the numbers of emails clicked. Obviously, in a perfect world, every single person you send an email to opens it, reads it, clicks it, and then buys what you sell, right? Now, based on the information in this table, I can make a decision on how I want to get those numbers closer together. I could strategize a whitelisting campaign, basically reminding people to whitelist our email as soon as they sign up for it. I could clean up my list to ensure a higher delivery rate. I could start testing new subject lines or new formats of them to affect the number of emails that were open or work on our body copy and the CTAs in our emails to get the clicks we want. Next, let's look at sessions by email marketing source. This metric shows us the number of times our site was visited during the specified date range. It's split up by email marketing source. The source in this case would be the specific email campaign. So with this information, you can see at a glance which campaigns are most effective at driving traffic to my website. Now that I'm able to see which emails are driving site visits, I can start strategizing on how to deliver an even better and more valuable experience to my subscriber's inbox. So for example, notice that the forgot password email is our winner here. <laughs> I think when it comes to marketing, we can often forget that the customer experience encompasses every touch point, even mundane ones like that. So instead of looking at this data point as something that we should ignore because it's quote unquote, not marketing's job, we could instead see this as an opportunity to be creative and collaborate with our support and product teams 
to deliver a high value experience to our user. My guess is that users who forget their passwords might be logging in for the first time in a while. So this is our chance to re-engage this customer. And beyond knowing what drives the most site visits, we can also see here which needs some work. And it looks like one of our newsletters might need some more direct CTAs or some engaging body copy. Now we move to emails open rate. This is a metric you can calculate using data calculations. It's available on our professional and performer plans. But in this case, I'm gonna to go to calculated metrics and drag and drop them into our dashboard since I already have them built. This will tell us the average percentage of emails opened by our list. And this is an incredibly important health metric to track. If this begins to dip, it could tell us a couple of things. The first being that our subject lines aren't hooking our subscribers into opening an email from us. It could also mean that our list is becoming unengaged. Maybe too many salesy emails in a row or an automated campaign that's losing its charm. Finally, we get to emails click rate, which is also available through data calculations. Now, having two representations of this metric in our dashboard provides us with additional insights. So first I have the percentage visualization, which tells me what the average click rate for all of our emails is. Just like emails open rate, this is a great help metric to keep tabs on the quality of your body copy and CTAs. For the second representation here, I chose emails click rate by title so that I can see exactly which emails have the highest click rate. That can help us identify the email formats and CTAs that work the best. Once you have your board set up and connected, it's time to ask yourself, do you notice any patterns? Does a specific topic do really well or a specific kind of email? Perhaps sending at a particular time has an effect. Take note of any patterns that emerge and use these to improve your future campaigns. After building a dashboard like this, keep in mind some of these metrics might need to be monitored on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, especially for automated emails. You kind of want to check in on those every now and then just to make sure that nothing weird is happening. And in other instances, you might want to select a custom date range based on specific email campaigns you're sending this month. If you want help building this dashboard or one like it, our support team can definitely help you do that for free. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.